thank you for coming and thank you for and uh, joining us this session. The session title is uh, Cooperating while, while Developing National Competitiveness. And uh, even though we have got uh, five more in a panelist and uh, in the speakers, but I'm afraid we have got only one. Uh, but, you know, hopefully I'll be able to enjoy and uh, talking about the topic. So, and uh, my name is Kenji Yokoyama, and uh, I'll be chairing um, this session. The session title is, as I said, Incorporating While Developing National Competitiveness. And all nations, all countries pursue competitive traits and uh, have distinguished innovators, and though many are not recognized on the international stage. They differ in their inability to compete in the international arena and how can nations manage their and the competencies to achieve long-term growth and generate jobs and increase welfare. Is there a link between the competitiveness and inequality that could be enhanced to benefit the poor nations? Okay, and uh, the topic is that under this topic, and uh, I have invited five speakers and six pe speakers for this session, but we have got right now only one, uh, but only one, but, you know, the most important person, I, I must say, okay? And the uh, name is Alex. And Alex, could I ask you to uh, introduce yourself about yourself first? Uh, yes, thank oh, well, you. Thank you, and uh, Sebright Chen, and I, I'm going to introduce Sebright later, okay? Sure. Okay, Hi, and uh, Alex, please go on. Thank you. Thank you, Kenji. So I'm uh, Alexander I'm Alexander Cummings. Hmm. Uh, I'm a retired executive, uh, business executive. Uh, I worked uh, for many years with the Pillsbury Company in the United States uh, of America, where my last role was vice president and chief financial officer for mm -hmm. Pillsbury International Businesses. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the Coca-Cola company where I ran Coca-Cola's businesses uh, in Nigeria uh, from, from uh, Lagos. I ran half of Africa from Nairobi. I ran all of Africa from uh, London and Johannesburg. And then my last role at the Coca-Cola company, I was executive vice president and chief administrative officer of the company globally. In that role, I had responsibility globally for most of our corporate functions. So strategy, uh, human resources, all of the technical functions, R&D, procurement, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. supply chain, uh, quality, also have responsibility for information technology, for sustainability, uh, and many other functions. Um, the, the two functions that I did not have responsibility for was uh, the CFO, financial reported to the CEO, and marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. And that last role, I was in there for eight years. Uh, retired in 2016 and entered politics in my home country, Liberia. I am not currently in government, but I'm an uh, opposition politician in Liberia, aspiring uh, to lead our country to run in the elections in 2023. So brief, uh, my background, again, primarily from the, the business, economics, finance, general management side, Kenji. Thank you very much. You have got a variety of background. It's a quite amazing, impressive, I think. Also businessman and politician as well. And you are the most, you know, suitable person for talking about this topic, I think. So, could I ask you to, uh, you know, say something about this topic? Okay, and uh, cooperating uh, with other countries while developing national competitiveness. And uh, from your background, could you say something about this topic? Absolutely, and and I think you're right, Kenji. Giving, giving my broad experiences, uh, having spent time in in, in uh, many living and working in many countries around the world, both in Africa and in the West. Uh, uh, hopefully my, my comments and thoughts will be helpful on this topic. Uh, so first thing I would talk about, the, there is a need for cooperation uh, mm. among nations um, for some very obvious reasons. Um, one is we all live in the same ecosystem, uh, meaning we all have environmental challenges, environmental issues, and it's important that across the world, across regions, 
that we are collaborating uh, around around the environment. It's also very important uh, that we collaborate uh, around national security threats, uh, issues around money laundering, around drug movements, around criminal cartels, um, uh, around terrorism. Uh, so again, as nation states, very important that that uh, co- 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 cooperation uh, takes place along those lines. It's important mm-hmm. that we uh, cooperate uh, from an economic perspective uh, to the extent we can harmonize uh, our trade policies, uh, the movement of goods and services. It, it helps individual countries, but uh, just as importantly, it helps regions and it helps uh, us uh, in this global in this global world. Uh, the use of technology and, and again, where it makes sense to to harmonize and standardize. All of these things are important to uh, every individual, whether you're in the West or in the East, in Africa or whatever. So there, it is very important that, that we collaborate and cooperate as nation states. At the same time, uh, to be uh, a good cooperating partner, uh, you have to understand your competitive advantage. You have to make sure that you're living up to your part of the bargain. And this is where uh, I don't see any contradiction in trying to be competitive. In the case of, mm. of, of Africa, where I'm from and where I grew up, it starts with the basics, making sure that our rule of law and sanctity of agreements are, are in place, uh, anti-corruption rules and policies, security, uh, and investing in people, education and health systems. These things are foundational. They are basic uh, to, to making sure you can compete and you can participate and co- co- collaborate. And then, of course, competing from an economic perspective. Um, understanding, uh, you know, uh, the global value chains of your products, uh, what is raw materials, what is agro products, so where is your competitive advantage? Where can you add value in terms of this collaboration but at the same time looking after your country and, and your, your, your people, creating a conducive business environment because it's important that we understand that the private sector is the driver of economic growth, is the, the job creator, and therefore private-public partnerships becomes important in creating an environment so that you are competitive uh, vis-a-vis your neighbors. And again, in the case of Africa and Liberia specifically, because we are a small country, um, scale is important, uh, and so working collaboratively but also making sure we're competitive uh, will help the, the sub-region, will help the continent, will help the world, will also uplift uh, and improve the lives of the citizens of Liberia. So com- competing and collaborating are critical, are important. And on the surface, it, there may appear to be contradictions, but there actually aren't many or any at all. Because again, to collaborate and be a good partner, you have to make sure you're competitive, and your basic processes and systems uh, support uh, collaboration and cooperation. Thank you very much, and Alexi. You gave a very clear distinction be- between the area of all, you know collaboration is needed, and also area and the competition is needed. And uh, you gave a very clear distinction between them. Thank you very much. Also, you said that ecosystem. And national security, including terror, you know, uh, things against uh, terrorism, and uh, we need to uh, take hand in hand. We need to do something hand in hand to, to you know, make it better. Thank you very much. And uh, okay, Linda, Linda, and uh, you want to say something? Okay, Linda, you should come this uh, in a platform. You simply join as an audience, Linda. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, Linda will be coming, I think. And uh, Linda, may I ask you to, uh, you know, uh, leave the uh, platform once again and uh, be sure to come back. Okay. And the next speaker is that, uh, you know, Sebrae Chen. And uh, firstly, and uh, can I ask you uh, uh, who you are, <laughs> what you are? Firstly, could you tell me your introduction? And uh, so please, uh, you know, it should be followed by and uh, what you're talking about and uh, about this. Of course. So, So, yep. Thanks, Kenji. So I joined a little bit late because, you know, I was traveling. So uh, let me just do a brief introduction. So uh, 
So I'm founder and chairman of Summer Atlantic Capital and uh, what Summer Atlantic Capital is doing. So so before uh, I was ba based in New York and uh, I came to China right before the COVID starts, right before the virus. And what Summer Atlantic is doing uh, is mostly towards as a management, uh, but towards, you know, like the technology mm -hmm. sector. So we, we have industry focus towards uh, mm -hmm. medical technology and uh, IoT sensors, semiconductor robotics, in, as well as agriculture technology, which mm -hmm. you know is quite interesting because not lots of companies are you know taking a look into the agriculture sector, which we think is very important because food, you know, is one of the most important things that involve in our business on a daily you know like on a daily basis so mm -hmm. so what we do is we bring uh you know we, we have team members in in the us we have team members in china we have team members even in singapore and uh, what we do is we bring technology companies that is already commercialized in their home countries such as the us europe or even australia and uh uh, they are ready to expand in internationally into markets such as China, Japan, uh, as well as uh, as well as Singapore. And uh, we evaluate, and uh, as long as we think the product and technology makes sense uh, and have the market and have big, you know, growth potentials in the emerging markets and Asian markets, we bring it there in you know use different ways to help them expand and also you know our team members will involved with their operations management and so we'll help them with the funding sometimes we build up our own funds to invest as well so you know like for, for us it's some romantic things uh, you know like all the different ways to fund a company it's just a, a method and a tool to help the company grow so so that's what we do and uh, mm. You know, our team members was, you know, have lots of experience with the industry level, including some okay. senior management, yeah, senior management from, you know, the school of Alhambra before as well. Thank you so much and uh, so bright. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. that, you know, today's topic, as you know, cooperating while developing national competitiveness. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that uh, you, as a CEO of the company, I think you are in the middle of the competitive mm -hmm. environment, I think. And yeah. at the same time, yes, yes go on. Yeah, are there anything you want to say about, uh, you know, co collaboration and cooperation while competing? Right. I mean, I mean, that's a very interesting topic indeed. And that's something like what you said, what you just said, that we are, you know, like dealing with on a daily basis every day. And uh, I heard what Alexander was saying, and uh, I, I kind of like what he was saying. And uh, so, 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 you know, like since we are dealing with cross-border issues, technology expansions every day, uh, so first uh, we think, you know, like from the government level, uh, you know, like we, we were dealing with politicians, investors, uh, you know, business executives every day, and from and, and mm. including entrepreneurs, and myself is an entrepreneur as well. So, um, so, so from the policy level, we really think for from the different you know companies or different countries' perspective, we really should uh, cultivate a context, an international context, and a domestic context that could really you know like help encouraging and nurturing you know those growth of the business and the business expansions and innovations. So, so you know, like countries right now, like Alexander was just sad. Um, you know, it's very connected to each other, and uh, you know, from the competition is important and is unavoidable. While at the same time, we still need to, you know, every country wants to grow their competitiveness. So, so first, the thing first, I think, in order to do that, we need to understand, you know, the landscape is different. For example, some sectors are very strong in certain countries, but in certain countries, in other countries, they really need to to drive the innovations from that sector in order to become, you know, more competitive in other sectors. So, so it's indeed more complementary rather than, you know, compete with competing with each other. So first thing first, I think you know, countries and the governments should become more open. And collaborate with other nations, uh, with other nations in different areas, as well as they, they need to start establishing more trust towards different countries. And then, if we break down to the you know policy level, 
uh, you know, like mm. if there is an innovative company or a technology company or maybe a foreign enterprise that is looking to expand internationally, uh, the process usually is different from domestic companies, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. it could be very, very complicated and create lots, lots of obstacles. And timing, we all understood from the company's perspective or from the entrepreneur's perspective, timing is very important. Sometimes six months is long enough to kill a company and kill a good technology. So, which means, you know, I think from the government and policy level, we really should simplify the procedures and process for innovative companies and foreign enterprises. Uh, you know, for example, from operation to, to, to foreign enterprise, to, to foreign, you know, investment, uh, including, you know, the principles and guidelines, uh, you know, like each country or domestic market has of incorporating, um, as well as, you know, like the cooperations, for example, a company A is willing to expand into, you know, maybe China, and then uh, they, they need to have some domestic clients, right, in order to survive in that market. So uh, there are certain standards China may have uh, in order for that, you know, foreign enterprise to become a, you know, valid partner to Brazil's significant domestic enterprise. So uh, we, uh, that's just an example, you know, the, the principles and guidelines of cooperating with key domestic enterprises in different markets should be, you know, become more international as well to, uh, you know, to, to actually stimulate the growth of international expansions. And that's indeed actually good. I mean, there are lots of, you know, companies, uh, I mean, countries used to like to protect their domestic enterprise, such as, you know, like uh, protection towards international trade. But uh, from my point of view, I actually think it's a little bit risky to do that because in mm -hmm. order to, you know, like make your, you know, make those domestic enterprises become more competitive, it's actually better to foster, uh, you know, the context and environment for them to become more competitive which allows, you know, more, uh, you know, like foreign enterprise enter the market to, to you know, minimize the trade protection uh, and to ask the market to become more, you know, like more market oriented. This will indeed increase the competencies of local enterprise as well. So, so that's from my point of view, you know, you know in the this perspective, but also uh, if we speak about, you know, there are some details involved with this process, you know, for example, that intellectual property, which is actually, you know, like a concern involved with lots of these companies because they want to get protection while entering a new market. They want to stay, they are under you know, protection so they can do their business safely without worrying about, you know, some other people my my campaign and to do the same thing without, you know, like, uh, without getting the protection. And uh, so, so, so I think, you know, from the international property protections perspective, uh, the IP protections should adapt to the international standards as well. And if we, if we go to, you know, like the business operation level, Went down to, if we go down to mm. that level, there are some concerns we might mm. need to address as well, such as, you know, uh, like the certificate industry standard, right? Uh, for example, in the, you know, technology industry, that you need to get certain certifications in order to start selling your products. And uh, for, you know, like industries such as medical sector, it's even tougher, it's even more difficult. For example, in the U.S., we have the FDA and in China, we have the CFDA. So it might take up to, you know, several years, three to five years in order to get more approval to start selling your product. I, but I don't blame that because, you know, that's, uh, you know, kind of like a necessary process for a product to be tested, including the clinical trials and everything. But uh, from the, you know, like uh, industry level, uh, in order to simplify this process, uh, I think we can connect some local standards to international standards to decrease the time and difficulty for you know technology-driven or innovative companies and foreign enterprises to to receive the market entry permits or licenses and necessary certificates to start operating in the new market. Okay, thank you, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get back to you, 
soon after mm. talking with the Alex. Mm. Alex, and uh, I think uh, you were, you know, uh, so when, when you say cooperating, developing national competitiveness, so we focus on a na nationwide, in the countrywide. But when you were a business person and very active business person, and uh, you're involved in competition, but at the same time, and uh, did you have a chance to uh, do some collaborative work with other companies or something when you were a business person? Uh, yes. So. You know, there, there are certain areas where uh, corporations uh, do not necessarily compete. So, for example, in the whole area of uh, sustainability, in oh. the case of uh, of, of Africa, mm. we, we collaborated with other multinationals uh, with regards to the HIV AIDS issues and mm. providing drugs and, and supplies to employees and communities. Uh, so we worked, for example, at the time with, with Heineken uh, and other corporations uh, in, this, in this effort. Mm -hmm. uh, in the area of water and sanitation, in these basic needs, uh, there are opportunities to collaborate with other businesses and collaborate with, with governments. Uh, so we used to speak about what we called this golden triangle of uh, mm -hmm. businesses, uh, government, and then civil society. Uh, and foundations, and so collaborating with other businesses, collaborating with foundations. We did a lot of work with the Gates Foundations, for example, in water and sanitation, with USAID. There, there are multiple areas where it makes sense to collaborate with other businesses because everybody benefits uh, within that context of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what well, is connected? Hello? Okay, Alex, uh, go on. Yes, yeah, Linda, welcome we, back. Welcome, okay. and I'm going to talk to you later. Okay, Linda, thank you. And Alex, uh, please go on. Yeah, thank you, Kenji. So so there are these areas, again, COVID, the, 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 the crisis around the world, pre presents some opportunities for businesses to look at how they can collaborate to protect communities, mm. to protect society, uh, their businesses, their employees, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, there are these opportunities uh, where business to business can collaborate and not necessarily compete. Uh, and similarly, as, as uh, Seabright mentioned, and we mentioned earlier, the opportunity for countries to collaborate. There's just some basic things that make sense of some foundational things that, that need to be in place. And then beyond that, uh, you can look for competitive advantage uh, and, and to compete. Um, so um, I'm a I'm a big advocate in doing both, and don't see too many contradictions in co cooperating while while collaborating. Thank you so much, Alex and Linda. Welcome. Thank you. I, my I was a bit problem. worried about that. No, that's okay. I, now yeah. you you arrived. That that's good. I know, but I'm, I'm really sorry. We had some issues, so um, I appreciate your kind consideration, and um, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. Um, yeah, please go I'm on, Linda. Pyle. Okay, I'm Linda Pyle. I am chairman of the board of Presto Tech, which is an accelerator program located at the Vienna International Airport. I live in Austria. I've been here for 27 oh. years. So as an entrepreneur mm. with a very diverse working background. I've experienced different professional environments, whether it's been in Asia, Europe, or in the United States or South America. Um, it's been quite interesting to me to see the development of the national competi competitiveness. One of the things that we do at Presto Tech is we work together with governments as well as with new technologies, as well as with investors. And what we've noticed between the countries is that there's an enormous amount not only on competitiveness with the startups, but as well as with the countries that are being represented. With Presto Tech, we are combining, uh, we like to see ourselves as a bridge for bringing in the East to West uh, into Europe, and we like to see ourselves as a springboard. Austria mm -hmm. has been very active in inviting new technology because we've noticed that Europe has been very, uh, is, is, although they're very good in engineering, it's very hard for them to 
roll out these processes because they'll engineer many things to death. I always say they're engineering things to death. What I've noticed is, is that there has been quite a big investment in the EU to collaborate and to promote and develop this competitiveness within Europe, which is quite interesting to me, as Austria is a very small country. However, it is a country that we have uh, a lot of market entry for startups, the simple reason that the Austrians are encouraging international tech to come in because they want to be competitive and to do corporate collaborations with the current ongoing technological developments. The government uh, realized that with the digitalization that was coming in, it had to be much more competitive. With COVID, we noticed, particularly in the airport, how much this impacted the logistics area, how much it impacted uh the uh, moving, uh, not only moving of goods, but actually the new working environment. And we found that there must be competitiveness and collaboration in order for us to be, uh, in order for us to aggressively join the marketplace. And I say we, I'm speaking from a European perspective. Um, in, my, as in the last 15, 20 years, I've traveled all over the world looking for tech, whether it was in mobility, whether it was in energy, whether it was in railway, whether it was in uh, renewables, and also now in aviation, uh, autonomous vehicles. And it has fascinated me that the, the only challenges that we run into is when the government don't develop trade or collaborations to help export their knowledge out and also to import mm. knowledge in. And I think if we could work together to develop mm. these collaborations, then we would have a better, uh, a better, a more of a global environment. It wouldn't be anymore my country, this country. We are all, frankly speaking, we are all becoming global citizens. And you know, people ask me, uh, where are you from? I live in Europe. But I, my family's from Mexico, and I've traveled mm. all over the world. In order for the government to be more competitive and to be responsible, this is my mantra in, here, in, in Austria, and I do work with the governments here as well as with the Minister of Economy and the Chancellor. In order to be efficient and to fulfill your fiduciary responsibilities to your, uh, to your stakeholders, you must create a platform that allows for this collaboration and exchange, which is why we at Presto Tech Hub, when we bring in intellectual, I always call it intellectual property or talents from other parts of the world, when I invite them or when the, when, when the CEOs and the team invites them and they've identified, we make sure that these young companies get financed. You cannot go to another country and expect your VCs or your investors to pay for that. We make sure they get financed, and we also make sure, which is financed by funds that have been developed and put aside by the government, mm -hmm. and we make sure that they have the corporate collaborations to do the POCs in order for them to be successful on market entry. You can't, and, and the, what, why do we do that? Because we're making sure they're doing R&D with the Austrian professors, with the Austrian corporates, and with the Austrian programs and governments, whether it's the city of Vienna, city of Linz, you know, in the, in the municipalities and in the states. It is important for us not to think about competitiveness. It is important for us to work together with our governments, to work together with the investors and the stakeholders, and most importantly, to create the environment for the future of this new generation. I'm, I'm sorry to say that I'm not mm. part of this new generation. I'd like to, I would love to say, but I know where my age, no, my age is. You belong to a new generation. Oh, thank you. No, no, but I, I'm realistic. I know very well when I'm working with my 25-year-olds or the 30-year-olds. You have to imagine, <laughs> I've worked with, with companies, Austrian companies and other companies, even Asian companies, mm. and they're unicorns today and I watched them become unicorns in the last 24 months 
There's nothing to stop us. I think the governments need to become more radical in their thinking and as radical as their generations because you can send a t- you can set up a tech hub like what you have in Austria, but you got to make sure that they have the funds to encourage the talents to come to their countries. So we've invited, uh, trying to wrap it up quickly mm. for all of you. We tried as a Presto Tech Hub located in Austria. We are linking. We took advantage of the location because we have direct flights from China, direct flights from uh, Japan, direct flights from Taiwan. We have direct flights coming in from different mm. parts of the world, not Frankfurt. It's here. And we are also able to to use this as a small uh, platform or testing ground before we develop a scale-up program for Europe. We don't want these young talents to get stuck here. We want them to move out because we are investing in them ourselves and we want to see them scale up. And we are considered ourselves an international platform. We consider us based in Austria and we are supported by the governmental um, uh, there's a funding in here. And I think in the future, once we develop these mutual interests and if our governments are, are, are experts in these areas, whether it's in food and agricultural, fintech, green tech, whatever it is, mobility, it's important for the speakers to speak loudly on behalf of the, the constituents and most importantly for the talents because keeping them in a little place is not going to work. And I think we should create ideas of how we can benefit by linking our techs and our accelerator programs or our collaborations in the future and to move forward for the next generation. Thank you very much for uh, you, listening. And if I can thank you, forward, let yeah. me know. You say that, uh, you know, what uh, government should do from now on as a collaborative work, I think, among them. And the things uh, that was uh, quite intriguing to me was that uh, knowledge in, knowledge out. And the government should be, uh, should play a very important role in uh, flowing knowledge, knowledge in, knowledge out. And could you elaborate on that? Does, could you tell me a little bit of detail about the knowledge in, sure. knowledge out? I, what we learned is, I mean, the 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 minister for economy, uh, she was in the telecom mm. business before. Her name is Margaret Schramba, and she has traveled and created collaborations in Singapore with other ministers. Mm. And what they do is, is we they send the the talents to other countries, or she's gone to the United, you know, United States. She's gone to Europe. They've gone to many places where they're developing this knowledge exchange, as you say, knowledge in, knowledge out, which is why mm-hmm. they decided to create this funding to, I would say, to create an attractive environment to bring knowledge in to work mm-hmm. because this was the commitment that the Austrian government made to go global. This is going international. Uh, Harold Mater mm-hmm. is responsible for the Chamber of Commerce for Austria, and, he, and they have major programs on going international, inside and outside. And this is where we've tapped into, and we, we move. We, we go mm-hmm. knocking on doors. I reach out to government. We have collaborations uh, all the time asking, please send us some of your talents, and we give them specific descriptions of what we're looking for because we know what our mm-hmm. stakeholders want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, and Sebright. And uh, now, as you, you know, Sebright, can you hear me, Sebright? I can hear you. Can you yes. hear me? And also, and uh, oh, wow. the United States, yes, I can hear you. And the United States and China is not, uh, you know, best situation, not in the best situation, among best relationship among the especially high tech industry or something. From that point of view, and uh, how's your business? Uh, your business has been affected by the kind of less collaborative things between the two countries? Sh- 
Sure. Uh, so, so thanks, Kenji, for this question. That's a pretty good question. And uh, uh, I, I would say that, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the U.S. and China relations is always going up and down, up and, up, up and down. It's, you know, kind of like the circle back and forth, back and forth. But uh, the thing is, we always have companies, global 500 companies and startups or growth stage companies that are doing well in China and in the U.S. from, you know, different markets uh, during the good times and bad times. So it really depends on, you know, your approach and how you are going to handle the different situations. And also as well as if you have the right partner for the new, mar for the new market. Mm. I also. Yeah. Okay, and Alex. Actually, you mentioned a very good point. Yes, Alex, you mentioned a very good point, Sherry. And, uh, and you showed me a clear di difference between and what, you know, they need uh, collaboration, what they should, you know, uh, uh, cooperativeness in. Okay, once again, and uh, right now you are a politician, right? I, I didn't get that, can be. So, Alex, are you, right now, are you a Yes, can you hear me? Are you a politician right now? Can, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, as a politician, and tell me uh, something and the necessity of collaboration between two countries. I didn't hear the last part of that, the question, but the, the one, the one uh, I would like to get some perspective though is because we all agree that cooperation, collaboration is very important. We live in this global village, but how do we sort of try to equalize some of the inequities between countries? Uh, because, because you know, if you look at Europe versus Africa or parts of Asia versus Africa, that some things are common between Asia and Africa, between some parts of Latin America, but there's this big gap. And, and so nation states have to figure out how they can be competitive. So how do you attract an enterprise to Liberia or to West Africa rather than them going to Austria? Mm -hmm or going to the more established, uh, safer environment. And this is where perhaps some of the tension comes between cooperation and trying to equalize things as much as you can. But then as a nation state, as, as a politician, I want to make sure that Liberia is, is also benefiting in some way and is competitive. Uh, and, and so we need to figure out that tension. Where do we compete? And where do we uh, where do we collaborate? Um, um, and I think we have some perspectives from Linda, perhaps, or, or even Steve Bright, on how do we do we manage that so that uh, the less developed countries around the world don't always stay less um, developed. You know, it, it, what what I would like to tell you is that I am aware that in Austria, yes, Linda, go on, yes. I'm aware that in Austria, we do have groups mm. of investors who are only focused in Africa. I, that, that's for sure. I don't know if oh, you have. Really? I don't know mm. if you have specific tech hubs, but what I could imagine is if we, if they were able to create some sort of. Uh, I mean, the first thing is you need to expose your talent, your talent, your your high flyers, and you say, okay, we're going to make an investment mm. to send maybe two or three startups to Linda, for example, when they're here. We show that we, we get the government, we can get the government. In the meantime, you get the local Austrian trade commissioner involved and say, we want to get two or three of our startups to go to going international. We've spoken to Presotech and we showcase them. We, we are committed to make sure that they, they have a good experience for three months and we help them to get funding if they can stay longer and they have a specific disruptive technology. Because you need to prove to your constituents that your talent actually got funding and that they are high flyers. That's number one. 
And these, they become your ambassadors. And these, these young talents have the opportunity to get, to get into contact as young ambassadors or for their talent with corporate collaboratives. And I do know, and I see, and I'm sure you could, you could, you could identify it yourself, but I, there are companies that are working, Austrian companies that are in and around Liberia. That I know. I would have to check. But I think I would definitely begin a dialogue with the Austrian Trade Commissioner, your local one, and, st and start developing them. They know me anyway. I mean, they know the, their, the headquarters in Austria, oh. the president, they know me. So they could really, really uh, be supportive, and I would be very happy to be a link for you. But I think it's important to think about investing in your smart talents and, and helping them to expose them to be your ambassadors of the opportunities and the talent that's awaiting for them in Liberia for future investment would be the best thing, is my suggestion. Oh, we lost everybody. I guess it's you and me. Right. right. Well, if so, it's... So, yeah. We lost it. No, I was going to say, we can stay in contact. I, I'm a firm believer that eventually relations are going to be uh, uh, back in the right uh -huh. place as it was before with the United States and with Europe. And I'm definitely... Yeah. And the balance yeah, are here in Austria and in Europe, so yeah. I truly believe in that. Your network is not stable. I, I think that would be a good idea. Long. And uh, I think, Linda, you just mentioned about what you guys are doing. It's actually similar uh, to what we are doing, but uh, except for, you know, we're more bridging the, you know, like the gap between, uh, you know, countries such as China and the other countries in Asia between, uh, you know, those countries and the Western market. Well, so, let's so, see how we can collaborate. Exactly, exactly. I would exactly. love to. Because I think it's the talents, it's the future, it's your generation that's going to make the new rules. And that's what we need yes. to set. The new rules are coming and we need to either grow with it or go, or go retire and sit by the pond and look at the, at the fish go by. You know, it's either one or the other. You either grow and move and exactly. develop those relationships. And I'm a firm believer that in order for us to have a good world, we need to be collaborating and working exactly. for the future. And the governments need to listen to the voice of what you guys are dictating of the futures. You're not the only one. I hear it all the time wherever I go. So I guess we'll stay in touch. Mm -hmm. You know how to find me, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's interesting. That's interesting. That The word is actually either growing, like what you said, it's either going to be growing together. Yeah. There's or that. Right. Yeah, it's ultimately. one or the other. And ultimately, growing together keeps us stronger and takes care of the new generations. So there, there will be no more babies. And at the end of the day, we are all the citizens of the earth. Yeah. Of the, yeah. And we have to take care of it. Right, exactly. And, and I think it's important. And someday in the future, it doesn't matter commercial. Now, commercially, everybody wants to have a, a better life. But there, but we have to be commercially sound, environmentally sound, and we've got to be thinking about the long term, not short term. And I've always been a component of long term effects because when I'm gone, you'll know, you might remember me, but your kids won't because they'll never know who I was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my legacy is to do something better in the future. Exactly for the long term benefit and the long term profit. Exactly. For all of well, us. Yeah. I get, we lost everybody, so I, I'm mm. wishing you a wonderful day. We have two more minutes, so um, I think for me it was very interesting what our colleague talked about, you know, with Liberia, because there are mm. also, I, I know mm. that there's some startups in Africa that are developing. Mm. I know, that, I know that you, the Chinese have invested heavily mm -hmm. over there. I know there's collaborations with mm -hmm. South America because of the mine. So I yeah. think there's a great future, and I really hope that we can support our colleague. Exactly. But I, I like what you saw because, you know, like some raw materials and natural resources were actually from Africa. And they actually think it's a good idea for them to start marketing and uh, 
uh, you know, they're key enterprises and, uh, you know, like uh, uh, industries that uh, are very, you know, having advantages among the other countries are marketing themselves and calling with some, you know, key enterprises in their local market. So, you know, like we can do more towards what to do with the African market and also for, you know, like global companies, they can, when they are thinking about Africa, they can start thinking from... Right. You know, I mean... Think, Mm-hmm. The, the, one, the one thing that I think is is that they have to keep in mind Africa has always had a, a, a troubled uh, political environment and it really takes uh, I always say seasoned mm-hmm. investors and people exactly. that understand the mentality who are going to mm-hmm. go in there and do mm-hmm. something and change it exactly now, or who, who understand the mentality and can work with it and help them to develop that's something that you need, and that's key. Um, for us, in, in, in our, in, oh, there, you're back. Yay. Uh, you're back. Yeah, finally. I have to say, this was a big, this was the first time for me that it was such a challenge to get in. I really had a hard time. And, and then the, and we lost our speaker. We lost our, chair, our, our chairman. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I was saying, you know, your country, the things are developing in such a way. Um, and I, like I said, there's seasoned European investors who are not afraid to go there, who are willing. But I think in order to make it more attractive is if you get your talents up and running, well, whatever it is, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever it is it's important or and, and to create collaborations with European countries because then people start to pay attention. Right. I don't know. Do you know who your ambassador Do you have an ambassador here in Austria? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Oh, where is your European ambassador? I think based in uh, Brussels. Okay. Well, he should be on it. I mean, if I can be supportive because I think it's – I like to – as we say – Back in the States, I like to put my money where my mouth is. So if I'm going to, I'm not talking to talk. If, if there's a, something that I can do that's relevant or which is, um, that is supportive for your objectives, for your talents, or for helping to become more competitive in the world market, then please let me know. Okay. You know, it, because I think it's important to continue the dialogue. I mean, look at look at the three of us. What we represent. Right. We're we're one side of the world. Yeah. So um, and and I think it's super important. And again, I apologize for coming in late. I just had challenges linking in, and I was really surprised that our other speakers were also not able to link yeah. in. Yeah. So Linda, uh, which would have been nice. Can I can, I, can, I, can I give you an email? Um, and then yes. we can continue the dialogue and just see where it goes. Um, and if it leads to something, great, yes. if not, that's okay too. We, we would have just. No, no, you can. I, I, do you want? Do you want? I don't know if I should send it to you in the comments. Only not that many people. It's only the three of us, and you have my email. Can you see it in the comments? Um, let's see. Uh, no. This is my. Investment one. You see that? Uh, it's not this year. It's not coming. Here. All right, I will. T- I will tell you. Uh, oh, let me see comments. We didn't get it. If you click on the right hand side, the comments, you will see that. I put my email as well. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see that. Uh... You can also find me in LinkedIn. Okay. So, just so you know, it's funny. I can't see. I can't. Oh, I got your. I got your email. Thank you. Right. It's on the right hand side. It's on the right hand side. So we, we're all connected. We just need yours. Yeah, I'm clicking. And then we're all. I'm clicking on there, but uh, let's see. I'll enter mine, but I'm not seeing yours. That's weird. Okay, I'll tell you mine. Okay, my my hmm? email is Linda. Okay, Linda. I see yours. Yeah, but I don't see yours. Linda. So go ahead, Linda. 
at, at, and then it's Pyle. That's my last name. P A I E R L. Pyle Consulting. So Linda at P A I E R. No, no, no. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send you a quick email, and then you'll have my email. All right. Perfect. Thank you. I think that's easier. It's C I H Group. Yeah. A, B, C, and we can all stay. Yeah, LTD. I got it. I'll send it to you, and um, because this is this email, you'll have my email address, which comes directly to me. That's my private one. Right. Because we also, my company, we're also investors, and we invest in renewable energy and in the mobility and the mobility sector. And I'm currently working more on the autonomous mobility. So we stay in contact. And um, if I can be of support, it was actually the best part of this whole event was meeting both of you because right. I learned there. more about you. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.